Hey, I am Foligon, and in this video I'm going to be walking you through my entire character creation process from start to finish. This time around, I am working on an illustration of Bowser Jr. inspired by the work of Luis Huerta. I've done a lot of other videos just like this one. Uh, one of my personal favorites is a baseball mage character that I created not that long ago, as well as Sculptober, which was an absolute blast to work on. I made a new character every single day for the month of October. Absolutely insane. It killed me, uh, but it was a lot of fun, and I learned a lot from that experience. If you're interested in checking out either of those, there are some links down in the description where you can check them out. And if you are wondering, where do we go from here? Where do we start? Well, the answer is obvious for people who've been watching for a while, and that is with a blank canvas and a ball of digital clay. If you are new to digital sculpting, then a lot of this can be very confusing, but it works in a very similar way to traditional sculpture. Being most comparable to working with clay, or maybe even wax, we start with a single sphere of digital clay and use that as a starting point to add more form. Now, in real life with clay, you can't move quite this fast and you can't duplicate your clay at the click of a button, uh, so digital definitely has some advantages there. But in terms of understanding and creating form, focusing on shape, everything there is exactly the same. What I'm working on currently is what is referred to as blockout. This is when you get the main shapes down for your character. Here I am focusing on getting the larger pieces into place so that I can then work on proportions. As I always say, you can't worry about proportions too much unless you have something to compare it against. It's kind of the whole point of proportions, right? During this stage of development, a lot of new digital sculptors struggle a lot. And for many reasons. One, sculpting is just really, really tough. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie there. Uh, but two, things can look really awkward at this stage and you can end up getting tunnel vision on those areas and never progress. Your objective during the blockout should be on what is called primary form, the large shapes that make up the silhouette of a thing. Not until you have those as good as you possibly can should you move on. If you move forward too quick, you'll end up in a rut, and then you'll just have to take steps backward later. A great example of that is if you were to sculpt a mouth on top of a head whose form wasn't foundationally sound, no matter what you do, those lips will never look good unless you fix the most basic shape first. Check out the video in the description if you are interested in learning more about that, or if you're interested in a nice process for how to sculpt lips. Now, after I get all the large parts in there that make up the silhouette, I can start moving forward towards refining what I already have. I'll also start adding in little things that I may have missed. The way that I typically work involves keeping many separated pieces at first during the very early stages, and now as I continue forward, I'll begin combining those. So for the arm, I may have three unique meshes or pieces of digital clay, but now it's time to combine those and start blending them together and refining the larger shape as a whole. I've seen many questions about why I often work this way, with split up pieces and then combining them later, and the answer is very simple. And it actually has to do with that word, simple. The objective there is to look at something like an arm or maybe even a face and begin breaking that down into the most primitive, simple shapes that you can. So an arm might become a few cylinders or stretched shapes that you can combine together later. By working this way, it not only helps mentally break down shapes even more, but on a technical level, it gives you even more control of the shape that you are attempting to create. If you are interested in learning more about this process, I do a more in-depth breakdown in this video where I sculpt Maui from Disney's Moana. Check it out if you're interested, and I'm sure as you can guess, there is a link down below in the description. At this stage, I have started blocking in some of the accessories for the character, such as the bag and other items around the waist, uh, as well as the handkerchief around the neck. I'm always enjoying getting to sculpt anything with some nice flow of form, and fabric can be a great way to practice that. Now is when things start getting fun, although it's very basic right now, adding color can really help your character come alive. I personally find it to give my eyes a new perspective as I move forward, making it easier to recognize mistakes in my proportions. I'm currently painting the belly of the character to get that distinct color separation for the front there. I use this paint later to gauge the proportions for the width of my character and make some large changes around that area. You do have to be careful with paint, however, as it can make it difficult to see how messy your surface becomes as you continue sculpting. 
With traditional sculpture, you typically wouldn't paint something until the very end once the sculpture is already finished. But in digital, we can kind of do all of that at the same time, which is very nice. But just keep in mind that it's nice to toggle that off from time to time so that you can see everything without the color on there, distracting you from what's important. And that is form. Once I am happy with my primary shapes, it's time to add on top of that. This is what is called secondary form. I start by making some rough lines on the chest of the character, and later return to these to refine them even more. It's good to not overwork these areas too much at first, because if you make a mistake and have to go back to correct something, you will have wasted time. So I just get the most basic placement first, and then later on I can come back and clean those up. The most difficult part of character creation is definitely the face, so I am careful to take my time and make sure the facial features are where I want them before adding anything else. I spend a good amount of time working on the muzzle or mouth of Bowser Jr. before adding in any teeth, which is the exact same principle that I just spoke on, looking at the lines for the character's chest. Once I am happy with where things are for the basic shape, I add in the teeth and other smaller elements, all while still refining the shape of the mouth to make sure everything is interacting in a good way. So far, I really like the face, but it's got a long way to go before it's finished. Something I find very helpful for people that feel like they are stuck is to take a break from working on one area and move around. And I don't mean physically, although that's probably good for your health if you're sitting a lot all day. I'm talking about jumping around on your sculpture. I spent a good amount of time refining the face, so now I will go work on the body for a little while, trying to refine what I already have and fill in any gaps where I'm missing things. It's nice to think of sculpture or character creation as having these nice, simple stages or even steps that you could number out, like a clickbait video that says, here are the five steps to sculpt a character, but it is unfortunately for us a lot more messy than that. There is value in thinking of form as primary, secondary, and tertiary, kind of a nice three-step process like I mentioned just a second ago, but in real life, there's a lot more back and forth. A character face is the focal point, but that doesn't mean that everything else should simply fall to the wayside. So it's time to bring everything up to the same level of finish as the face. Starting off with the shell, getting some nice deep separation between the different segments, adding on some cool spikes, and then move on to work on the handkerchief a little more, making sure that the fabric is interacting in a believable way. Hair is always fun, but very time consuming. Lucky for us, Bowser Jr. doesn't have a lot of it. The top of the paintbrush was a more abstract shape, so there was a lot of room to experiment and have fun here. After I got the main shape down, I made these different striations that weave in and out of the main shape to create the feeling of many bristles clumped together. The items around the waist took more time than I would have liked, but I couldn't let them look bad when I put so much time in on the character's face and body. I do more to these later on to get the leathery material to feel more accurate, yet still stylized. But for now, just getting everything to about the same level of finish. The paint canisters were a lot of fun and super easy to make, so I spent some extra time making a couple details to the spray nozzle, while also spending some time now to make the loops holding the canisters a little higher in resolution. I am not much of a painter to be completely honest, my skill set relies more on three-dimensional form, so I spent a lot longer working on painting this mouth on the handkerchief than someone else probably would have. I am pretty happy with how it turns out in the end though. I wanted to have a rough paintbrush texture because that was something that I enjoyed about the original illustration. So I combined a few different effects with my brush to get this thin bristled effect. I always love when I get to experiment with new things just like this. Every character is like a brand new puzzle for you to solve and painting in this style on this handkerchief was definitely a puzzle I had never quite tried before. The hands were pretty simple, but I need to get them to align with the arm better. Right now, they are much too small. Getting those to interact with the paint and staff later is also kind of a pain. Unfortunately, hands are always tough. I played around with a lot of different techniques to get some paint splatter effects, but never found something that I loved. So I hand painted most of them with some spray-like strokes in an attempt to get something decent. If I were to try something like this again, I may just download some splatter-like alphas and try that. Taking a quick step back to make sure things are lining up properly. It's very easy to get tunnel vision and forget about things like gravity. So with a few tweaks, we can get this clothing feeling a lot better. The leather on the belt was actually a lot of fun because I was allowed to just go crazy with a lot of different brushes to essentially mess up the surface. You'll see a more refined version of that here in a brief moment. I say refined, but actually it's quite a lot more messy. 
I've now started breaking symmetry and posing Bowser Jr. and that means that some things can get a little messed up. The example I like to use is to straighten your arm out in front of you and then bend your arm like you are flexing your bicep. Notice how the shape of your upper arm changes. This is caused by your muscles flexing and extending, as well as skin getting compressed. And even in some instances, like in your forearm, even your bones can twist and overlap. With such a stylized character like Bowser Jr., knowing this isn't super important, but he will have some shapes in his body change based on how he is posed. With more extreme poses for characters, it can sometimes be easier to start asymmetrical from the very beginning. This is something that I actually did in my Athletic Girl sculpt, which if you haven't seen, there is of course a link down below. I've actually created a Bowser Jr. before, and I thought it would be fun to look back for a brief moment. Here's one that I made at the very end of 2017, so a little over three years ago. I think it's a good practice to look back on old work to see where you have been and how much you have improved. When I made this little guy, I had only just started my YouTube channel, and I had only been sculpting for a couple years. Here is a Bowser in a completely different style that I sculpted about two years ago. <laughs> what can I say? I like Bowser. I think I spent a lot less time on this one compared to the one I'm working on now though. I don't know the exact number, but if I had to give a guesstimate, I would say that the current Bowser Jr. sculpt took roughly somewhere between 20 to 30 hours. As I approach the finishing stages here, I start to add small details. On the shell, I start adding little cracks and areas of damage. Details can be a great way to add some storytelling to your characters. None of that was in the original 2D artwork, so I take some liberties to expand upon some of the areas of the illustration that were a bit more loose. I've done a bit more to the face at this stage, beginning to add some asymmetry and expression, as well as little bits of texture to areas like the horns, a little more variation in color and texture to the face, and a tiny paint splatter up on the cheek. Here is the refined version of the belt after working on the texture, making it feel more like leather. Leather is one of those materials you can go a little crazy with because of the organic randomness that it has. In particular, I enjoy using brushes that bunch up the form in combination with brushes that let me flatten other areas. It's a great way to quickly iterate on your organic shapes. Wrapping up some final details here with some stitching around the edges of some of the leather. Not actual stitching, of course, but close enough to read as such. You'll also notice some more details on the paint canisters up near the nozzles, as well as some more details on the belt buckle. And with some finishing touches up here towards the face, we can just about call Bowser Jr. complete. The final stages from here will be rendering, which mainly involves setting up some nice lighting for my model. But before we check that out, if you just so happen to skip here to the end, what's going on you dirty skippers? I don't hold it against you here for skipping to the end, I know a lot of people do it. No big deal, I appreciate you checking out my content either way. But if you did enjoy the finished result here, I think you'll enjoy getting to see the process as well. So consider going back and checking it out. If you are interested in learning more about digital sculpting, check out gumroad.com slash Folygon. There you can find things like my custom brushes and some of my online courses, like the Appeal Academy, a course and mentorship program all rolled into one. I teach working professionals at places like Blizzard and Capcom, as well as people on their very first day. If you are looking to improve, then the Appeal Academy is where you want to be. If you are new around here, click that subscribe button. Or even if you're not, I appreciate you giving it a click. It helps the channel out a lot. I see people comment all the time that say, I've been watching your videos forever and I had no idea that I wasn't subscribed. So make sure that you are. Ring the bell if you're interested in notifications. If you want to see some more awesome content like this, consider checking out my Sculptober series where I created a 3D character every single day for the month of October. I also have a bunch of other videos just like this one where I walk you through my entire character creation process from beginning to end. I appreciate all of you for watching here until the end. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will catch you in the next video.